All right, everybody, make sure my cell phone is off as usual. I'm always checking that. So, hey, today we're going to be talking about money, money for trades people. And I got to warn you, uh, this particular episode is, uh, so it's being recorded here on Facebook Live. It'll be a podcast episode as well uh, here on Profit Tool Belt. But this episode is going to be completely 100% business owner focused. Um, everything in this is going to be the opposite of being on the tools. This is a completely future focused discussion I want to have with you. Uh, some of you have read a book called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. It's an old book, but it's it, it, there's nothing better. I mean, as far as mindset goes, as far as the mindset of being a business owner who's building a real company, you can't beat that book. It is, it's one of the, the, the top books I'd recommend. There's a couple other books. I won't get into it today because I want to I want to keep focused on this money issue. But let's talk about the problem with money for construction, contractors, trades. And it doesn't matter what your trade is. This is called, here's the hat, Profit Tool Belt. This is for business owners who happen to be in construction, not construction guys with a crew, right? There's a difference there. I'm going to ask you this now. And as you're listening to this show, as you're thinking about what we're talking about, ask yourself the question again and again, am I a uh, businessman who happens to be a contractor or am I a contractor with a couple of guys? There's a big difference between the two. We're going to talk about that today when we're talking about money. I get that you like being on the tools, but at some point, you can't be on the tools if you want to grow the company. And it might not be me telling you this. It might be your back, <laughs> your knees, your elbows, your neck, your shoulder, uh, maybe your breathe. I don't know. I hear these things all the time from guys. They're like, I love doing this kind of install. I love doing that work. There's a satisfaction at the end of the day from doing something. I get that and I would never take it away from any of us. And at some point, you have to ask yourself, what are you building now? Are you building a deck? Are you building a pool? Are you putting in an overhead door? Are you building cabinets? Whatever it is, right? Or are you building a company? Are you building a company? And really that question comes down to why are you in business? Are you in business for personal reasons or are you in business for business reasons? If you're in business to take care of your family, to bring home and provide for your family, you'd be the greatest mom or dad that you can be, then you also have to think about the future. I'm going to go there. I'm going to talk about the future. And really, I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. And listen, remember, I'm no BS. I've been a business owner myself for many, many years. I'm completely unemployable. I don't have a resume. I guess I've got LinkedIn, if that works. I haven't had a resume in years. I've been self-employed or dom employed for a long long time i'm you know started and sold a couple companies myself and i love what i do i'm as you know a business coach but i work specifically with tradespeople because those people you people know how to get stuff done and uh, i'm not really a big fan of the white collar world I'm more of a fan of the blue collar world because we all get stuff done so today we're going to talk about money, but we're going to talk about it from a different perspective. I want you to approach this conversation, like I said, from the perspective of, listen, I'm a business owner who happens to run a contracting company. And that's where we're going to get into the money question here. I've got my notes here, as you often <laughs> see me looking around. I've got a screen there. I've got notes here. I've got to make sure I've got everything in order. And I have to look at this camera, not this one. Uh, it's just weird. Okay. So the question I want to pose to us right now is, uh, I'm going to use the technical term for it first, okay? The technical term when we're talking about money is recurring revenue. So that means money that we can count on coming in month to month. Now you may have used that word before, you may have heard that word before. If you've never heard it, the first time it'll come up unless you're listening to this show is when you sit down with a business broker or a lawyer to sell or insure the business. Because recurring revenue is an important thing that the future owner of your company is going to want to know about. Now, if you are building this business to pass it on to your kids or to pass it on to in, you know, your managers who you have now, or if you want to sell it to Joe off the street you know, through a business broker, recurring revenue is a really important thing in those people's minds. Just like it would be for you if you were buying my company. You'd say, okay, Don, listen, I'll buy your company. Let's say I do lawn maintenance or uh, garage doors, it doesn't matter what my trade is, probably a trade that you know or understand. You're gonna say, well, tell me 
What kind of business do you have? What kind of work in progress? And you're going to want to hear from me that I have guaranteed work in progress, right? So one of the challenges that we have in contracting, it's a big challenge and we all kind of hide from it. We stick our head in the sand. Stop. Don't do that anymore. I'm not trying to be mean and I'm not trying to be over the top, but you're ignoring the facts. The facts are that if you're a contractor and you work on contracts, you get a job, you're off a job. You get a job, you're off a job. Man, that's hard on your heart. It's hard on your brain and it's hard on your books. So we can fix that by something called recurring revenue. Let's use a relatively easy to understand example. It's not simple. It's not easy, but it's not hard at the same time. Think of when you were a kid and maybe you decided to start mowing lawns. Okay, great way to start a business. So easy to do, right? Knock on a few neighbors' lawns, $25 here, $25 there, $25 there. But they're going to pay you that $25 every single month. Now, if you're a cabinet maker, if you do garage doors, if you make pools, if you do windows, if you do framing, it doesn't matter what your trade is. There is a way for you to build your business so that there's always recurring revenue work, right? And that recurring revenue work is an emergency landing. Now, think back to a couple of months ago when we had this global pandemic and things stopped. They shut down. If you were doing contract work, contracts dried up. If you're doing maintenance work, maintenance contracts, many of them kept going because the companies that were still open needed their mechanical contract, needed their plumbers, they needed their lawns uh, maintained, they needed whatever it was done, done. Now, granted, it may have slowed down, but what a way to come out of that by knowing you had a whole bunch of contracts in place without even knowing your trade, because this is a business person's podcast. It's just for business people who happen to be in the construction trades. Congratulations and welcome for finding this because I haven't found anything else like this on the internet. I want you to think about this. If you can get a $300 service contract from somebody or some company, you might think, well, Dom, that sounds like peanuts. I don't want $300 service contracts. What a headache. Well, let me change your mindset. And I'll change your mindset, not by ideas I came up with, but things I've learned from other very smart, scratch that, from wise business people I've met throughout my life not just here in the United States, not just in Canada, not just in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, or over in Europe. I've talked to very wise and smart business owners for a very long time. I study them. I like people who've built a lot of great businesses. One of, one of my favorite stories has nothing to do with construction trades. It's a gentleman that I met at a business networking meeting, and he came to present to us about the companies he'd bought, built, and sold great guy. If you met him, you'd think he likes golf a little too much, but just a normal guy. But he's a guy that put together deals and his deals were always based on recurring cash flow. One of the things he did that was really cool is he went after an industry that all of us, many of us, most of us overlook and it's the janitorial industry. We don't think about it because most of their work happens after hours at night. But he went and bought in the janitorial industry a whole bunch of distributors, small local distributors. And then he went and bought a manufacturing plant, understanding that as soon as he could make the buckets of cleaning chemicals and soaps and things like that, he already had that distribution model of recurring revenue out to the distributors who were selling out to the people actually using it. One of the greatest deals he ever did is beer companies. Now I've got your attention. He got a small craft brewery to buy a massive bigger brewery by solving a problem that they had. And the problem that the bigger brewery had was that the guy, the owner's ex-mother-in-law was chairman of the board. You think you have it tough at work every day. That story made me shake. Anyways, this guy was able to do the deal. So just to underscore this, the, the question of recurring revenue, the question of ongoing monthly revenue is a really important one. So let's talk about a couple ways that you can put it in place in your business. And I want you to keep an open mind. You can yell and scream in your truck as much as you like that I'm speaking uh, BS. I'm trying not to swear because I know many of you are driving with kids in the car. Uh, you might be walking the dog on the treadmill, whatever it is. But let's talk about this. That 300 bucks a month of service contracts. Let's say that you uh, do a deal with a hotel or a restaurant chain and you enter into a service agreement with them. $300 a month doesn't sound like much, but I'll remind you that that's what's 300 times 12 months. Let's do the math here. So we've got it. 300 times 12 months is 
There it is, $3,600 if you can see the screen. No funny math. Can I, can I hit the screen there? Okay. Um, but what's that service contract for? You're going to say, Dom, there's nothing I do that's worth 300 bucks. Now that's for first priority call out. So that's priority on call service. So you can contact a hotel or a restaurant chain or something else. And you can say, look, I do my trade and I'm going to do a service contract with you guys. $300 a month gives you priority on call service. Any service calls in addition to that, it uh, will bill at actual cost. So you're going to think, well, Dom, that doesn't really cover the cost, except that you got to remember, they're not going to call you every single month. Maybe they're going to call you every three months, in which case you have $900 banked. And for the one month they call you for priority after hours on call service, you've got that solved. Well, let's dial that forward. Let's say this year you sign 10 accounts like that. Well, that's not too bad. That's some pretty nice money. But after year one, you have 10. After year two, you have 20 accounts like that. After year three, you've got 30. After year four, you've got 40. Following me here, right? After year five, you've got 50 accounts like that. 50 accounts that are paying you $300 a month for priority on-call service. They're not using it every month, as you know. But that is $15,000 a month in recurring revenue. $15,000 that you can count on coming in every month. What would $15,000, it's probably going to cover your rent. It's probably going to cover uh, equipment uh, leases and things like that. Like, what could you do with $15,000 a month guaranteed coming through the company? Well, but I'm going to multiply that by 12 months because that's $180,000 in revenue that you would have coming in every year from uh, having 50 accounts who paid you 300 bucks for nothing more than priority on-call service. Now, some of you are saying, Dom, who's going to pay for priority on-call service? A hotel will. A restaurant chain will. When they need to be first in line, when something happens, they need to be there. Now, of course, you're going to have to do the math in your company. What does it cost to have you send a technician out to do that? But once you've got that figured out, wow, 50 is the basic that you can get. Let me dial you forward 30 years from now, because I'm speaking to you and you're a 20-year-old construction contractor business owner. But dial it forward 30 years. Now you're a little bit older. You're, uh, what's that, 30 plus 20? Yeah, you're 50 years old. Wait, you've already been around for 25 years. So you're 75 or 80 years old and you're thinking about selling the business because you're a superstar. But when you go to sell that business, you're going to sit across the room from somebody, just say me. I'm going to say, yeah, I'd like to buy your business. Tell me about your business. Tell me what kind of business you've got coming in. Tell me your machinery, your inventory, your work in progress. Now, the way things are now for most people in construction trades, they'll say, well, we've got a very good name in the business. People know us. They trust us. And so they give us their work. That's not true. You bid hard for every job you get and you fight tooth and nail for every job. If I'm going to buy your business, I'm not being impolite. I'm going to buy it for work in progress, whatever cash flow I can get from that, equipment and inventory. And that's the problem construction has and nobody's telling you guys about it except me. And I'm coming across as the bad guy. But what if I sit down with you and you say, yeah, Dom, I've got great equipment. I've got my own real estate. I've got work in progress, I've got inventory, and oh, by the way, we have 50 service contracts that brings us $180,000 a year in revenue. Now you've got my attention. If I'm out and I'm really a serious buyer looking at buying a couple of different businesses, yours just went way to the top of the list because you have consistent cash flow. When I'm buying your company, I want to buy your cash flow. And so I want you to have that in place. I want you to have that in place if you're selling it to your kids, to your, your niece, your nephew, your daughter, your uncle, your next door neighbor, because they're going to buy that. And I want you to have that money. Now, just so you know, and we'll talk about this in the future when I talk about selling a business. I've, you know, of the two companies I've, I've built, one of them I got to $120 million uh, and I sold that. And the other one I got up to about 237 franchised units. And I sold that company as well. And you can imagine what a franchise company with 237 franchise contracts with seven-year terms sells for. Did okay. But it's because I set it up in the beginning to be like that. So I'm not talking BS here. This is exactly how it works. The buyer will ask you, how can I guarantee cash flow in the future? Because that's what they want to buy. Okay. And I want you to be able to sell that. So by the way, when you go to sell that $180,000 ongoing cash flow, they're not going to pay you 100% of that. They're going to, dis it's called discounted cash flow. Again, we'll get into that later. But maybe they'll pay you half of that. Maybe they'll pay you a quarter of that. So half of 180 is 90 grand. 
half a 90 grand, which would be a quarter of, of the total, is $45,000. Would you like to have an extra $45,000 tacked onto the value of your business in the future? What would you do today if a $45,000 bill just floated out of the sky and landed on your desk? Well, first of all, don't try to use that because it's probably fake. I don't know any country that has a $45,000 bill, but you know what I mean? $45,000 just floats out of the sky and lands on your desk. It's yours. But you worked smart to get there. So let's talk a little bit more about how to do that. There's a couple places. In your business, you can put contracts in place. Now, service contracts are easier for certain kinds of companies than other ones. For instance, if you do window cleaning, you can just do window cleaning contracts. If you do mechanical contracting, if you do plumbing, you can do plumbing contracts. Landscape maintenance, just built in for, for you guys. It's so easy, right? Pest control, absolutely. All you have to do is change the way you market and change the way you sell what you do. It's a little harder for industries that are traditionally repeat, uh, repeat, or sorry, contract based, not repeat based. So if you install overhead doors, if you do cabinets, if you do countertops, uh, it's a little tougher. If you do house painting, you might think, Tom, how am I going to do recurring revenue contracts for homes? Well, it's easy. I mean, I used to be a house painter too, right? What you do is you find a reason to come back. Maybe there's small service contracts throughout the year. So let's say you paint my house and you're going to charge me, just pick a number, $5,000 to paint my house. Just pick the number, right? It, how much does it take for you to say, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Lopez, we're going to paint your house. It's $5,000. And by the way, we have a service contract. Certainly there's a warranty and this is how it works. But what we're going to do on an annual basis is we're going to provide the paint and the primer and we're going to come back for an additional $800 a year or sorry, let's say $300 a year. We're going to come back and we're going to do touch-ups uh, equal to four hours of work. Okay, now you just know that that's going to be coming back, but you've got some money set aside to do that. And over the years, you build it up, you build it up, you build it up. Okay, the other thing you can do is go after commercial work, but give them that service contract, $300 a month for priority service callouts. It exists. And don't, what, what, what I have to do and what you have to do, don't let yourself be the limiting factor, right? The only person putting a limit on your success is you. It's not the economy. It's not the contracts. It's not the general contractors, or the property managers we, we deal with. It's you. It's me. It's the guy next door. It's the lady over there. We all put our own limits on our own success. So get rid of them. Take them out. Walk around with the belief that you can do it and find a way. Again, I go back to the e-myth revisited. Go read that book again. And think about the entrepreneur mindset. The entrepreneur in that book is the person who thinks about the future. They ask the question, how can I dot, 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 or what if dot, dot, dot. And I'll remind you, anytime you're listening to this podcast or having a meeting with me, you're in entrepreneur mode. You're not in technician mode, which is swinging the hammer, turning the wrenches, uh, digging the hole on the machinery, whatever it is, right? My job is very specific in this industry. It's not to teach you how to be a better technician. It's not even to teach you how to be a better manager. It's to teach you how to build the company you really, really want. The reason you go to work every day, not just to kill yourself so one day it just goes away. It's so you build something real, something that gives you cash flow, something that gives you pride, something you can sell in the future, something you can pass on in the future. That's why I'm here to help. Okay, so we've got contracts. We've got service work. We kind of talked about service work already. You're not going to find service contracts unless you ask for service contracts. Now, if you're stuck, if you say, Dom, I got a doozy for you. You don't know how my industry works. There's no way we can put service contracts in place in our industry. Give me a call. Honestly, just give me a call and let's see if we can't work through it on the phone. I'm not going to charge you for it. I love the challenge. Uh, you know, my cell phone, it's all, all over the place. 604-837-8361. Text me there. Or in the U.S., you can text me at 831-824-7850. If you don't think there's service work available in your in your industry, call me and let's hammer it out because we can find it, right? Even if you're a framer, even if you install pools and you go, Dom, I install pools. How many pools is somebody going to buy? You'd be surprised where we can find the opportunity. Okay, the other one here is real estate. Now, you've heard me talk about real estate before. I love real estate. I really do. I love real estate because of what I hate. I hate the smell of burning money. And when I learned this from my uncle, an Italian man who came over with nothing, like all of my family and probably your family as well. I mean, when I say came over with nothing, came over with nothing. I, I 
often hear around the table how when my uh, aunts and uncles came here, the first jobs they had were paying them 20 to 25 cents an hour. And yet now, <laughs> you know, granted it's 50 years later, but look at how successful they are. They've got real estate, they've got homes, they put their kids through university and college. I'll bet you, my if I make X per year, my dad made 25% of X. So he made a quarter of what I make now. But if I went to my dad and asked him to lend me money, he would have it. Isn't that crazy? The mentality and the way that the immigrants came over and looked at the opportunity here is something I think we need to go back and revisit. One of my uncles told me this. Now he owns a store, a specialty retail store. Great place, but nothing crazy. And if you look at that store, you think, how does he get by on that? It's just a store. Well, it's not a store. What you see is a store. What I see is a store. But he squirreled every single penny away into real estate. So we see him at the store. We walk into his store and we see him behind the counter. But what we don't realize is that guy's a landlord. He has got recurring revenue coming <laughs> everywhere. Very quiet, very understated, doing great. Thank you very, very much. But he told me this. He said, Dom, for the rest of your life, when you're paying rent, every month is expensive. When you're paying down a mortgage, your most expensive month is the first month because it always drops down, right? So we want to find ways to buy that real estate that you're in because you're going to have to pay for that real estate anyways. Buy it or rent it or lease it, right? Lease it out to yourself. Be the landlord. I mean, if you're really, really smart, think ahead. I had a client once many, many years ago. Some of you heard this story. It's a chiropractor, actually, because as a business coach, I've worked with a number of different types of businesses. I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, but one of the guys, uh, you know, you meet people through other people and uh, I, I set out to help him, chiropractor. And he was getting frustrated with the rent he was paying in his building. Now it was an uh, office type building, you know, retail in the bottom offices up top, kind of your standard thing. Uh, just outside of the downtown core, really nice neighborhood. And he's, Dom, I cannot believe the rents I'm paying. It's killing me. And so during one of our coaching meetings, I said, well, why don't you try to buy the building or buy a building? Dom, why would I buy the building? That doesn't make any sense. How would I ever do that? And, you know, so we just came up with a plan right there on paper. And he approached the landlord and his landlord, actually, the builder, building owner, wanted to sell. So he ended up buying that business or buying the building and his rent came down because he had, what was it, nine other units that were paying the rent to him now. What a great way to build a future for himself. You know, a chiropractor is a lot like a trade contractor. They can only take one job at a time. Chiropractors actually got more limitations because unless they're working on you, they can't work on somebody else, right? At least when you're a contractor, you can split up your crews, you can go do other things, but a chiropractor can't do that. And yet he was able to take that business of being a chiropractor and turn it into a recurring revenue business because he added real estate in there. I want you to do the same thing, okay? So real estate is in there. And then we've got people in this industry, and I learned this, by the way, from, uh, or I got reminded of this, I should say, how many people are doing this. I have a Facebook group called the Contractor Strategy Group. So if you go on Facebook and you type in Contractor Strategy Group, as long as you're a business owner in the construction trades, you fill out just a very brief application, I'll let you in. You can listen to what everybody else has to say. But how many people out there are actually renting their equipment? So lifts and hoists and machines and things like that. Renting them out, not just to anybody, but other people they know. Because the, another guy who they trust needs a hoist, needs a ladder, needs something. And so they're renting that out to other crews. Great way to get existing, re, uh, recurring revenue from existing machinery that you've got. Anyways, however you choose to do this, I want to challenge you. I want this to stick in your head like a, like a hot marble rolling around. How do I get recurring revenue in my business? Because the first contract you do, you're going to go, well, that seemed like a waste of time. 300 bucks from one service contract just to be priority on call. But then you get two of them. And then you get three of them. And then you get four of them. Right? Remember, place two businesses side by side five years from now. One of them has $180,000 in recurring business and the other one doesn't. Which one's going to sell first? Which one's going to sell for a little bit more? Those of you watching on the video can see I'm moving my hands like any Italian would. Those of you listening to the audio, I'm moving my hands. The the, the business that has 180,000 in recurring revenue is 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 getting more value because that's just how it works. Anyways, uh, let's see what else I've got here. You set the rules. So that's the final point here is you set the rules. This is your 
business. And so you set the rules for how your business operates. The mindset of a business owner is being a problem solver. I love solving problems. I mean, I solve crazy problems. The, the conversations I have all the time are around time, team, money, exit strategy, sales, marketing, all the things, you know, I'm a business owner like you. So I think about business owner type stuff, all of those things and how they work together. And then you add over top of that family business or relationships inside the company and those things get, you know, it doesn't get 1% more complex. It gets like 100% more complex. But those things are what we talk about. That's where we're really good. That's why you're in this industry. That's why you got to where you are now. All right. So you set the rules in your business. And so set the rules the way you want them. Remember, and this is something I've said many times. You've probably heard me say this. What I say to myself when nobody else is listening is what the world sees when everybody is watching. So if I go out there and I want to add value to the world and I say, this is the trade that I have. This is what I do. I'm a painter. I'm a cabinet maker. I do countertops. I do framing. I do drywall, whatever, electrical, solar, whatever it is. But I'm a businessman. I'll say man, businessman who happens to run a contracting company. I'm not a trades guy with a crew. I'm a businessman who happens to run a contracting company. And when you change your viewpoint on the world, when you just change the way you look at things a little bit differently, that's where the success comes in because success all starts with our mindset. What I say to myself when no one else is listening is what the world sees when everybody's watching. Okay, let's leave that. Thank you so much for checking in. Remember, if you want to uh, hear more of this or hang out with, uh, you know, network with other people who listen to this show, we are all hanging out on a Facebook group. Uh, it's called the Contractors Strategy Group. Uh, contact me, contact through the website. Just go straight, straight through Facebook and you can find it there. All right. Remember to stay tuned because after this is uh, Storytime with Dom where I'm going to talk about a case study. Thanks for checking in, folks. Have a great day. We'll talk to you all soon.